Namaste. I am Anita Goa. For those of you who are new to my channel, welcome. Today I offer you practice number four of Beginner Plus, which is the continuation of Beginner 8, my beginner series teaching you step by step my style of yoga, Goa Flow. And today we are going to focus on our abdominals and we're going to move and flow and stretch and strengthen and find endurance with in them in a very crunch free way that will help you connect deeper into your center and I explain this a little bit more in a blog post that is related to this practice so you can read about that on anitagoa.com I hope that you enjoy this practice if you do give it a thumbs up let me know in the comment box below how it feels and of course make sure that you have subscribed if you enjoy my content and you use my content it's free to subscribe but if you don't know how to do it I created a step-by-step a way on showing you how you can subscribe because it's not super intuitive here on YouTube. Okay, so I will see you on the mat. For this practice, all you're going to need basically is a block, maybe two, and come into a hero pose or also called the Virasana if this feels okay for your legs. You can sit on the block to elevate your hips. Use two blocks if that feels better. So come up as high off the ground as you can maintain a lift and a length and an openness in your front body and extension in your back body where your head is over your shoulders and your shoulders over your pelvis. If you try out this pose and it doesn't feel right for you, use your intuition and your own inner guide to uh, then go into a cross-legged position, our easy seat or our sukhasana that we practice so much in this series, okay? So just be honest with yourself. Don't force yourself to do anything that doesn't feel right. And once you're in your position, place your hands on your lower belly and feel the navel drawing in, the chest is lifted and close your eyes. And just take a few centering breaths here using the ujjayi breathing that now hopefully is feeling more familiar. You have become very close mates, close friends. This ujjayi breathing has now supported you in all of the work that you've done so far, and it will continue to support you in all of the work that you will be doing in this practice and beyond. So just keep breathing, keep believing, and just put yourself in your position where you can breathe your fullest, deepest breath. So today we're going to take it a little bit further into our core, into our abdominals, into our center. And try to let this question circulate within your practice and maybe throughout the day that what does that mean to you to move from your center, to move from your core? Are you moving from your center? Are you moving from your core? The center in yoga is called Manipura Chakra, and a chakra is an energy center, and it represents self-confidence, self-esteem, action, getting stuff done. Basically, the way that I look at it is, is that as we strengthen the center, we put action into what we believe in and move in the direction of our goals and our dreams. So if your intuition tells you to do something, you have to follow through. So we need to keep this center strong, but also flexible and enduring. Good. and then open your eyes and we're going to start to warm up with what's called Kapalabhati breathing and Kapalabhati breathing is another form of a breathing exercise called pranayama and Kapalabhati means skull shining breath so when you do this you will start shining really really bright <laughs> so beware <laughs> I gave you a warning <laughs> 
So what Kapalabhati breathing is, it's basically sharp exhalations through the nose. You want to relax your neck and your throat muscles and let it happen like a pumping action from your abdominals. So first what we're going to train ourselves to do is contract and release, contract and release through the lower abdominals. Okay, so just do that with me, contract and release. And just doing this action is very toning for the abdominals, so contract and release, contract and release. And even this might be a little bit challenging to get that connection and to center in to this area, contract and release. Now when you're used to doing this, then you're going to add a sharp exhalation on the contraction it's going to be forceful. So forceful that when you send it out, it comes right back to you effortlessly. So the exhalation is active and the inhalation is passive. So I'm going to do it a little bit and then you can just watch me and then you can try and then I might just talk you through it for the rest of it. But as you do it, you're just going to do as many as you feel you have the strength and the endurance in your abdominals to do and then over time you can increase uh, the duration of it. Okay, so go. So you can just keep going and you don't do this with your hands, I'm just doing this to show you that I'm contracting and I'm releasing, okay? So just keep going as much as you can and it might be hard to do it initially, just keep that in mind, but just keep working at it and notice how energizing it is. This is great to do in the morning, you don't want to do this at night before you go to bed, but it's a great way to wake you up, to get energy and to get that motivation and inspiration going <laughs> and to shine bright. Good, and now slow it down and completely exhale your breath out. Good, and close your eyes if they're not closed already. And then inhale, take a deep inhale. This can be Ujjayi breathing. And then a full exhale and just let it go. Beautiful, do that again. Inhale, full breath and exhale it all the way out. Wonderful, do you feel a little lighter, a little brighter? So just keep practicing that, do as many sharp exhalations as you can, and over time you're going to start to find yourself getting stronger, okay? Now come off of your block, and we're going to come into a forearm plank position. So you will be on your forearms, arms are shoulder distance apart, elbows are shoulder distance apart, and then extend your legs out. From this position, hips are about shoulder height, press with the forearms, draw up through the navel, try to feel the shoulder blades separating and wrapping into your armpits, feel the neck long, and breathe here for five breaths. Inhale, and exhale. One, inhale, exhale, two, Inhale, exhale, three, inhale, exhale, four, inhale, exhale, five, good. Now rotate from the bottom of your ribs and lower your right hip onto the floor. Then turn your fingers to face to your left. Keep the bottom leg extended and the top leg can be bent in front of you or in front of the left foot or on top. So we're gradually going to lift our hips up for a side forearm plank. Again, lift out of the shoulder, wrap the right shoulder blade into the armpit and reach your left arm up to the ceiling. So the leg can be in front, in front of the foot or on top. Okay, so hold it here, breathe in, exhale out, one, Inhale, exhale out, two. Inhale, exhale out, three. Inhale, exhale out, four. Inhale, exhale out, five. And slowly lower your hip down. And you might have felt that all the way into your armpit, into the right side of your waist, into the oblique. Turn over to the other side. Keep the shoulder over the elbow. 
legs extend, wrap that left shoulder blade into the armpit, top foot can either be in the center of the mat, in front of the foot, or on top. Press the floor away from you and hold. Reach the right arm up, just keep looking down, breathe in, exhale out, one, breathe in, exhale out, two, breathe in, exhale out, three, breathe in, exhale out, four, breathe in, exhale out, five, and slowly lower down. Good. Now make sure in that process that you don't sink into your shoulders, but lift up and use the sides of your body, your obliques. Come back into the forearm plank, shoulder distance apart, hold it again. Wrap those shoulder blades into the armpits, press the floor away from you, and feel like you're squeezing a little bit into your chest. So you continue to strengthen that serratus muscle that we did in our practice number three. Hold the length, press through the heels and crown of the head, and lift the right leg up and lower it down. Lift the left leg up and lower it down. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Three more times. In and lower. In and lower. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale, inhale, and exhale. Good. Slowly lower the hips to the floor. Feel your pubic bone into the floor. Lift the navel, lift the heart. Wrap the shoulder blades into the armpits. Look down to the floor or forward, wherever your neck is the longest and your breath is the deepest. Breathe in and exhale out. Breathe in. Exhale out. Breathe in. Exhale out. Breathe in. Exhale out. Breathe in. Exhale out. Good. Now curl the toes under again. Draw up through the navel and press the floor away from you. Come back into a forearm plank. Lower the knees into the floor and exhale, rest back into a child's pose. <sighs> then roll yourself up vertebrae by vertebrae and stay on your shins. Knees are hip distance apart and we come into what we call a camel prep. So draw the navel in, feel the tailbone drawing down. Lift with the breastbone, take your thumbs into your armpits and really lift your chest, roll your shoulders back. Feel your hips moving forward a little bit. So you come into a bit of a back bend. Breathe in here, exhale it out. Breathe in, exhale it out. Breathe in, exhale it out. Now with that core connection, curl your toes under. Keep the chest lifted and navel drawn in and see if you can take a hold of your heels. All right, as you maintain that core connection, feel like you're lifting your rib cage up out of your hips. Don't throw your head back because then you're going to shut off your breath. And then I won't be able to speak if I were to do that. So camel pose, this is a very challenging position to be in unless you put your pelvis in the right place and you engage through your abs and you lift up and you lengthen. So once you find that position, it becomes a really juicy, nice opening back bend. It really opens you up to the world, to your potential. Then inhale, come all the way up reach the arms up and then exhale draw your thumbs to your eyebrow center into your intuition and then to your heart following and merging them together then open the eyes and then drop yourself down into knees chest chin be mindful in that transi transition inhale to baby cobra or upward facing dog good so getting that good stretch into the abs into the front of your hips into your chest and then exhale round it into a cat stretch and move your hands back inhale arch it into a cow good and come into a tabletop position 
Draw the knees a little bit closer together, but keep the arm shoulder distance apart. Extend the right leg out behind you, shoulder hip height. Draw the knee to the left elbow, round the back, draw the navel up and extend. Draw the knee to the right elbow and extend. Exhale to the left, inhale back. Exhale to the right, inhale back. Exhale to the left, inhale back. Exhale to the right, inhale back. Keep the right toes curled under, lower the foot. Extend the left leg, hold for plank pose. Stay soft in the tops of your shoulders, neck and jaw. Then exhale, draw the knee to the left elbow. Extend back to the right, extend back. Exhale to the left, if this is too much, Extend to the right, extend, then repeat the previous pose. To the left, extend with the knee and the shin on the ground. To the right, three-legged down dog, yes! Exhale, draw the knee to the navel and really round, draw up round the spine, softly step that right foot forward. Come on to your fingertips, place your hands on blocks or onto Stay on your fingertips. Good, and then reach the right arm to the ceiling. Gently twist it open. And lower the right fingertips to the floor. Pivot the left heel in. Stay on the fingertips or palm onto a block and reach the left arm over the left ear. Roll the navel and the heart up towards the sky. Good, lower the hands back to the floor and inhale it to plank pose and exhale, lower the knees into the floor. Good, let's do this on the other side. Shoulder distance apart with the arms, shoulders on top of the wrists. Extend the left leg out. Exhale, draw the knee to the right elbow. Inhale back to the left. Inhale back to the right. Inhale back. Exhale left. Inhale back. To the right and back to the left and back keep the left toes curled under lower the foot extend the right leg hold plank exhale knee to the right elbow inhale back exhale left inhale back keep breathing right and back left and back and you start to feel the heat rising that's good burn what you no longer need three-legged dog and integrate what you need draw the knee into the navel really round drop through the navel round the spine and step the left foot forward come on to the fingertips or place your hands on blocks and reach the left arm to the ceiling twist it open Full inhale, complete exhale. Good, lower the left fingertips to the floor or the palm on a block, pivot the right heel in. Extended side angle, lift out of the shoulders. Stay in your legs, stay in your core. Good, and lower the hands to the floor. Pivot the right heel off and step the right foot forward. Inhale, halfway pose. And then exhale, bend the knees and slowly sit down onto the floor. Keep your legs bent, feet grounded, toes lifted. Sit to the tips of your sitting bones and inhale the arms up. Exhale, roll it down, vertebrae by vertebrae. Inhale the arms back. Exhale the arms forward, draw in and gradually come up. Inhale, lengthen, two more times. Exhale, roll it down. Hopefully this is starting to feel a little bit easier now. We've been doing this quite a lot in our practices and you might start to see that it's all coming together. It's all making sense. <laughs> Hopefully <laughs> it feels that way. Good, and then exhale, roll it down slowly. When you're about halfway down, lift the legs up. Place your hands behind your head. 
flex your feet and go into the yogic bicycle. Make as big circles as you can. Push and pull. All right, so keep drawing the navel in. Stay soft in your face, in your neck, in your shoulders, in your jaw. Keep breathing. Good, and now just add on a little rotation. Push and pull, push and pull. So just feel that that rotation happens from the bottom of the ribs, the same area that we twisted from when we did the previous twist in our lunge. But anchor the hip bones so the hips and the pelvis stay still. Good, just a few more times. Continuing to strengthen the obliques. And center. Draw the elbows in and lower it down. Ha! Ah, excellent. Just let the belly expand on the inhale a little bit and then go back to normal on the exhale. So for the next one, you might need a block. Maybe not, but just watch it first. Ground the palms to the floor, lift the legs, root down through the palms draw in through the navel, shift your feet back and try to gradually reach the legs up towards the ceiling. You'll feel a good stretch into your entire spine. Then slowly roll it down vertebrae by vertebrae and when the lower back is about to touch the ground you lift the head up, hold it there and this is where you could put a block to support you. And then you try to lower the legs to the floor as close as you can and then gradually lift it up, root through the palms, lift the pelvis, you might not get this high initially, just lift up as high as you can, slowly roll it down, gradually lift the head up, and you just start to lower the legs as far as they can go, maybe it's here, make sure that your lower back is on the ground as you lower, you keep pulling in through the navel, and gradually come back up, Last one, and slowly roll it down, vertebrae by vertebrae. You can keep your head on the ground too as well, so just give yourself different options, be flexible, and find your way, and lift. Ah, very good, that's a challenging one and very Pilates inspired. Just draw the knees into your chest, relax your shoulders. Oh, very good. So just cup your hands around the knees, draw the knees away and gradually start to roll yourself up. So this is a pretty quick, um, maybe not so easy, but definitely a bit different way of moving and integrating your core. Uh, yoga inspired, of course, but keep your left leg bent, cross the right foot to the outside of the thigh, level off your sitting bones, and we're going to a seated spinal twist. Wrap the left arm around your thigh and gently twist it open to the right. So we'll continue to work on this and add on and just get even more core integrated. So I hope that you felt like that got your blood moving, got your energy going, got you feeling that connection with your breath and um, the movements drawing into your core and do an open twist. Excellent, and then change it to the other side. Right leg bends, left foot crosses to the outside. Draw the leg close to your chest and twist it open to the left. Drop the shoulders down. So it's just very important to make our movements functional. And it's not about, you know, having the flat abs or having the six pack abs, but just having abs that support you in everyday life and that will help to support you in your yoga practice. And also keeping your spine flexible and always making sure that you're moving with your breath. Then release and do an open twist. Excellent, and just cross your legs. 
into an easy seat. Lift your chest and exhale, hinge it forward. So rest your forehead onto the floor and you'll feel a bit of a stretch there into the right buttocks, lower back, middle back maybe. And gradually come up and then change your legs. Sit up tall, inhale and exhale, hinge it forward. Just let the shoulder blades separate and breathe in and exhale it out. Just release any tension into the left buttocks. And then inhale, gradually come all the way up. Sweep the arms to the side and up, gaze it up to your thumbs. And then exhale, draw your hands, thumbs to the eyebrow center, to your heart. Namaste, Let's bow down into the highest within you. Keep practicing, keep up the good work finding the connection, keeping the connection. You'll get stronger, more flexible, enduring as you put action into your goals and your dreams. And let me know what moving from your core or moving from your center might mean to you. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much for practicing with me. I can't wait to hear from you. Leave a comment in the comment box below. I hope that this felt good, that you feel more flexible in your core, stronger, that this might have given you some epiphanies along the way. <laughs> Read more about the core on my blog. So there's always a blog post together with each of these videos and you can learn a little bit more about it. And I will integrate this more and more in the rest of the series as well. So this is only the beginning. Have a good day. Bye.